Okay guys, we're going to go through a quick video today on something that's, for us, we find very, very easy. It's what we do all the time, just meal prepping, weighing food out, how we weigh it out, etc. It's just second nature to us, but I get so many questions every single week of clients being like, well, how, do I, how do I weigh this out? You know, if I'm weighing this out raw, what's it going to be when I weigh it when it's cooked, etc. So there's a big confusion around that and it's really not that difficult. So I'm just going to kind of simplify everything, go through how we cook things and then go through how easy it actually is. Basically what I'm gonna do first of all is I batch cook rice. So I'm gonna weigh the rice out, um, I'm gonna put that on, and then we can kind of go from there. But um, in terms of actually weighing things raw, I will always weigh food raw. Um, whether that be meat, whether that be carbs, and the reason being, a lot of people will do it differently. A lot of people will weigh their meat when it's cooked, but nobody's right, nobody's wrong. If you're doing that, if you're whatever you're doing, if you're doing it consistently, and you do not change the methods, realistically, it is not the end of the world, okay? Because everything is gonna be consistent. Your calorie intake, your protein intake, etc. it's gonna be consistent along the way. But personally, I like wine at raw, okay? And the reason being is because when you have raw chicken or raw mince, like 500 grams is always gonna be 500 grams, okay? Whereas if you're just weighing cooked chicken, okay? So if you're like, right, I want 200 grams of chicken, and every time you cook it, it could be different. So let's say, for example, you have 500 grams of chicken and you cook it and it ends up at like 300 grams when it's cooked. One time it ends up at 350 grams. One time it ends up at 400 grams. It's gonna be different every single time, depending on how long you cook it for, depending on the method you cook it, the cooker, George Foreman, pan, it's gonna be different every single time. You know, no matter what you're doing, just keep it consistent. But personally, I've always weighed it raw. I always get clients to weigh it raw, um, and that's that's not going to change for me. It's definitely the most consistent way of doing it. Also, for rice, it depending on how much water you actually put into your rice, it can really change the amount that it comes out at cook weight. So we always make sure that we weigh our water out and we weigh our rice out so it's the same every single time but for example if you don't do that and one day you put much more water into your rice than another day that can vary by 50 grams when it's cooked so with carbs it goes without saying you know regardless that should always always be weighed raw okay um but then obviously when it comes to meats people have their different preferences but carbs always raw um, it's just common sense because there's always going to be a lot more water at it when you are cooking. Obviously when it comes down to you cooking your rice, you don't have to weigh out two, like 2.1 kilo or 2100 grams. Um, weigh out whatever amount you want. The approach in terms of weighing it when it's done is still the same. So that's the amount we cook it with. Um, and you can cook it whatever way you want. Rice cooker, pa um, in a pot, whatever you want. It's, um, it's still going to be the same protocol. Um, regardless of the amount or what method you cook with as well. I definitely would recommend getting a rice cooker though because it makes life so much easier. It's on. So usually we would just we would just wait for that to cook and we won't even look at it and it'll just cook itself. So once that's done we'll show you kind of how to weigh that out once it's cooked. So gotta touch on the meat side of things okay so we're not cooking meat at the moment. We actually had meat cooked yesterday. So we're gonna go through kind of what we've done and how to kind of do this, okay? I'll map it out. So let's say for example here, we have chicken. So I think I cooked um, 1200 grams in total, okay? So I'm gonna run through kind of what to do in this circumstance. So I weighed the meat out raw, and obviously I don't wanna just cook like one serving at a time. So when you cook it in bulk like that, um, so I cooked 1200 grams. So it was 1200 grams raw. When I cooked that, okay, I let it cool down and then I actually weighed out that chicken again, okay? So the, the raw weight, I, whatever I got there, um, I'll actually put it on the, on the screen under this as well. So I went 1200 grams divided by the raw weight that I got, or sorry, the cooked weight that I got, and that equals one gram, one gram. Yeah, equals one gram. So I'll put this on the screen for you to see. So the, the raw weights divided by the cooked weights will give you one gram. So if you're looking for 200 grams of chicken, you will multiply that, that figure by 200 grams, and this will give you the amount um, of basically a raw 200 grams. Does that make sense? So I'll map all this out under so you can see these calculations. It's, it sounds complicated, but no, it's really, it's really not. It's really not. So like once that's done, Instead of like 
a lot of people do not have like all the Tupperware and room in the fridge to kind of just put everything in um, and separate it all out before they put it in. So what we do, that is 1200 grams of raw chicken in there. So we know per serving what it is already because we've already weighed it out. So when we are getting a meal ready, um, we can literally just pick out the amount we need and put it into our meal. So we basically know our serving size and the way we just we, we prefer to do it is just to have separate containers with say for example beef in one, chicken another, we'll have a few with rice in as well because obviously that's going to be a fair bit of rice and we just assemble our meals as we go throughout the day. Obviously not everyone will be able to do that because you will be you know going into work so you could still just keep everything in its separate Tupperwares and the night before just assemble all your meals for the following day and then you're ready to go. Yeah because if you're looking at cooking like Say having four, four meals or three meals of rice or whatever a day or even meats, that's going to be a lot of cooking throughout the day. Okay, it's going to be it's going to be a nightmare. So if you can make things easy for yourself, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to actually adhere to a plan. And um, so the more organised and prepared you are, things just run far 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 more smoothly and efficiently as well. So you will see the rice is going to be in Tupperware when it's done. The the meat's going to be in Tupperware. That Tupperware just goes in the fridge and then. Obviously, we work from home, so when we when it comes to meal time, we can just take out the amount of rice and chicken. It takes like a minute, literally, um, on our swords. But if we are going out for the day, it's very, very easy to assemble them meals because we already have all the food cooked, and we can just literally put it into Tupperware, and then off we go. So, again, you do not have to meal prep. It is not necessary, but it does make things a lot easier and just less room for error basically in terms of like making it easier for you to actually adhere um, and therefore easier for you to kind of achieve the goals that, that you have set out. I think a lot of the time as well that like people think that it's going to take a lot of time to actually do your meal prep to so to cook the rice to cook your meat and actually just put everything together like this and make those calculations however in the long run if you think about the time it would take you to assemble each one of those meals and cook every single portion, every single serving separately, that would take you so much longer. Yeah. So if I was to cook each meal from scratch every single time, like realistically, putting like 100 grams of rice on, then a whole portion of chicken, you're looking at 20, 25 minutes every single time. Whereas if you just cook it all at once for a few days, that's what, half an hour? Cooking it, weighing it out, putting it in the fridge, and that's you done, that's your food cooked for a few days. Whereas if you're cooking each meal from scratch, that is going to accumulate to like an hour, an hour and a half a day. It's just unnecessary. Just as an example for the calculations from raw to cooked weight. So let's use the turkey. So the turkey raw was 500 grams. When I cooked this, the cooked weight, so I weighed it cooked after I, obviously I cooked it, and it was 402 grams. So I would do the cooked weight, no, sorry. <laughs> so, so I would do the raw weight divided by the cooked weight, which was 0 0.8, 0. So what, 500 grams divided by the, the cooked weight, which is yeah. what? So I did, 500 grams divided by, no, it's not, it's not, it's the other way around. Say. So it's the cooked weight divided by the raw weight. So 402 grams, which is what the weight was cooked, divided by the raw weight, which was 500, which was 0 0.8. So that means it's 0 0.8 per gram of raw weight. So for example, my serving size is 100 grams of raw meat. So I would then do 0 0.8 times by 100, which comes out as 80 grams. So 80 grams of cooked meat is 100 grams of raw meat. Okay, and I have obviously weighed out all the rice and put it in a different Tupperware as well. So I think it equals, it was like 5,940 or something. So I typed that in, I divided that by the 2100, which was the raw weight we originally put in. And I think it worked out as 2.80 2 per gram. So basically, depending on what serving I want then, um, I have some meals that may be 150 grams, some meals that may be 100 grams. So if I have a meal that was 150 grams, I would multiply that 2.80 by 150, and that would give me the amount of grams for that meal. Does that make sense? So it's not that confusing. Um, that way, all my rice now is bulk cooked. Gems, obviously, meat is bulk cooked. My meat is cooked from yesterday. Put all that in the fridge. 
that's our knee and our right sore for the next few days. So we literally have to take that out, it takes a minute to, to weigh it out then, and it's, it's already cooked and ready to go. So yeah, it's, it's so much handier. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Did, did you fart? <laughs> okay, so that is our A plus. A star. <laughs> A star. Uh, content is done. Um, but yeah, just something very, very simple that a lot of people get confused about. So we thought it would help, but I just kind of run through it. So yeah, you don't have to meal prep. It's not necessary. You can still achieve your goals without it, um, but- It is it's, very, very handy. Yeah, it's probably gonna make your life easier by actually having your shit prepared. Um, like I said, the biggest thing I see, the biggest reason I see people falling off track is because they're just not organized, they're not prepared. So they wake up, they'll have nothing ready, they may make, but they may wake up late, they leave the house, they've nothing organized, they're on the go, they make bad food choices, um, and they'll just eat anything they can find basically because they haven't been prepared and organized. So to eliminate things like this happening, be prepared, be organized, you're always planning in advance. And again, you're just, you're setting, setting yourself up for success rather than setting yourself up for potential failure due to things that you cannot control. Oh, don't forget to like, 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 don't forget to like, subscribe. Um, oh, yeah.